Hello and a very warm welcome to this Dhanteras special. I'm Anisha Gupta and many Indian households consider this day to be auspicious for buying gold. The precious metal is not just purchased in the form of jewellery, it can also be in the form of exchange traded funds, mutual funds, sovereign bonds and a lot more. The gold is known for giving good returns in long run and has also proven to be a safe haven during global uncertainties. For instance, if you had purchased 10 grams of gold for around 50,000 rupees for Dhanteras last year, the price of that has now risen to around 60,500 rupees. That's a jump of a 21%. Not just gold, many Indians also buy silver or diamond during this festival. To talk about the outlook on jewelry buying, joining us on the show are Som Sundaram PR, he's Managing Director, World Gold Council, and Philip Newman is Managing Director, Metal Focus London. Also joining us is Ajesh Mehta, who's convener of the Diamond Panel at the German Jewelry Export Promotion Council. Gentlemen, hi, thank you so much for joining us and happy festivities to you. Som, let me begin with you. And we've seen such a volatile move in the gold prices in this year, $2,050 and then $1,800 on the lower side as well. The Indian market thankfully has seen some profit taking coming in now and that has led to a lot of buying. What is your sense? How is this Diwali looking like? Yes, the uh, interest level is very high mm -hmm. because of the price increase. There is no doubt about this. In fact, even uh, casual conversations now always branch into what do you think about a gold price? It's a good time to buy. I haven't heard uh, this kind of conversation in a very long time. So clearly the interest is high. But uh, what we hear is that it is not all translating into demand because when the prices rise in the very short term, Manisha, you know it, people tend to, you know, uh, attribute some reason. Maybe currently they think it's due to the war. The war is a temporary phenomenon. Once it goes away, we will have a much better price to buy. But interest is high. It is not translating fully into demand. Mm. So if you look at last year's comparison, what is your sense of numbers then? I mean, are we 5% down, 10% down? Is it going to be yet again the volume, uh, you know, value and volume playing differently? Well, uh, if you really look at it, obviously the price has been going up. I mean, I, you talked about last year, I was just looking at the prices, 2018, 32,000 rupees. <laughs> yeah. It uh, looks like, why did we not buy lots of gold then? You know? So, uh, uh, you know, that's the nature of gold, right? I mean, it, it just protects your wealth in the long term and it's got to be part of the portfolio. Uh, so, in uh, what we think is that uh, last year we had a good uh, fourth quarter demand, which is the Diwali season, 276 tons. May not this year, if the prices continue to be as they are now, it may not translate to that level of demand. You may see a little softness. Mm. Philip would want to include you in the conversations. I mean, this is Diwali time in India and we are all talking only gold, as Som also said. But with the kind of volatile moves that we've seen in last year, how is the next year looking to you? Well, I think I very much agree with what someone's saying. I think we will see, in fact, we're already seeing today, aren't we, in terms of the, the risk premium coming off in terms of what's going on in the Gaza Strip. Um, we would think that will continue. And so the markets, we think, will increasingly revert their focus back to what the Fed is doing in the States. And I think the Fed has been very consistent, saying that it will you know, keep rates higher for longer. It still remains focused on, it, on inflation. And so we think you know, there's still quite a separation between what the market thinks will do, what the Fed will do, what the Fed is saying. And so as the market moves increasingly to the Fed's position, we think that we'll see some liquidations and then, you know, gold will gradually come off next year. Okay, so then what, what uh, I mean, are you bullish from here? Would you think that next year could be of consolidation? I mean, lots of people seem to be telling us that as the interest rate cuts start, that is the time to be in gold. Quite possibly, but we think that the point when the Fed actually starts to reduce rates is being pushed out. Um, it won't happen anytime soon. Um, and when he starts to do so, then I think he will be very cautious in reducing those rates. Um, and at the moment, you know, the market is expecting the Fed will perhaps act quicker um, and more quickly as well. Um, but so we think that, you know, although rates will come up, and we certainly agree with you there, Manisha, but it will happen very, very slowly. So, you know, it could push gold as you move through. 2024 and thinking from a dollar point of view, you know, it could push gold um, perhaps below 1800. 
All right, that's not very good to know or good to hear. But I, you know, yeah, it's it's important to be very very realistic here. Also, uh, uh, Philip, uh, how would you look at the buying coming in? Because India, as Sohm said, is slightly on the lower side when you look at year on year comparison. The global central bank buying has been quite strong. The investment buying seems to be picking up as well. So, where do you see a lot of buying coming in? I think to your point, I think one of the most important areas has been central bank activity. You know, last year was uh, a record high figure. This year is also looking to be um, an exceptionally high total as well. And I think that's fundamentally important for the market in terms of the downside support that that's providing for the price. Um, and that's certainly something that, you know, we've been quite surprised at the strength of that. Um, and therefore, that, I think that's feeding through into perhaps a higher forecast from our point of view or for next year from the central bank community. Hmm. And the kind of correction that you were expecting in the gold prices next year, Philip, uh, would that be a good time to accumulate then? Oh, that's, that's a good question. Uh, thankfully, we're not sort of authorised to give advice, but I would say that you know I think the downside will be well protected. I think even investors that have been short or been on the sidelines this year, I think are still positively uh, disposed towards gold. They've seen how it's behaved um, over the past couple of years. And I think they would perhaps view those prices as um, offering perhaps a good entry point to come into the market. Mm. So when it comes to the Indian markets for the longest time, we've talked about rural India as a dominant player. Uh, when we look at the divide now with so many financial products available, would you say that it's an equal balance? Yeah, I, I would. Uh, I would think now that uh, uh, urban buying is, is uh, picked up quite a bit uh, because there's a lot more activity in in uh, non-physical. When I say non-physical jewelry and bathroom coins apart, you have lots of other activities happening, and that is more an urban phenomenon still. Uh, and also the uh, factors. I think the rural demand hasn't come back in a in a big way yet, as far as gold is concerned. The price rise has been a headwind, so um, I think it's still a, an urban play at this moment of time. All right, that's about gold, but let's talk about diamonds and Ajay. I mean, we've seen 25 to 30 percent decline in prices in last one year. Has that helped buying this Diwali? Uh, yes, Manisha, uh, you rightly said it's uh, actually actually contrary to the gold. It has gone down by 25%. Mm. Uh, different percentages in different categories of diamonds. Larger diamonds have corrected more uh, versus the smaller diamonds. But uh, w when you see the whole picture, uh, this is a uh, after a strong bull run we saw in 21-22. So, I mean, uh, post-COVID, uh, if you see the numbers in absolute terms, the diamond prices are still above the uh, pre-COVID uh, levels. So it is still stabilizing and it is now, I think the floor has uh, settled down. I mean, it is there. And uh, as we see, the manufacturing is uh, on hold for now as of now uh, significantly. Uh, Ponji Diamond uh, Manufacturing in Surat and uh, in Gujarat uh, due to Diwali season. Mm. And we are seeing optimistic uh, season in uh, the retail front, especially in India. And uh, the confidence is coming back in the midstream and at the consumer levels. So for the consumers, you know, value purchase is there for this festive season and both gold and diamond are a dollar-based commodity, if you see. So it is a good um, time to add this and diversify the, the consumer's portfolio and it acts as a natural hedge against inflation. You know, even in rupee terms, still it is about what we are seeing before it was, uh, the prices were before three years ago. Mm. You know, Ajay, I was reading a lot of reports on how the gold prices have been so volatile. So people are going down on the gold carriage like 18 and 14 and going higher on the diamond carriages instead. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I mean, it's good uh, for uh, even diamond. Uh, and it, it's a definitely a, a strong asset class. Uh, people have seen appreciation over 10 years, 15 years, or maybe in the temporary two, three years period, we've seen this volatility because of, you know, the economic crisis globally. Uh, but of course, of course, it is a dollar denominated commodity, so it holds value even in future. It will definitely hold value. Mm. Ajay, so what are the jewelry trends? I mean, you're the right person to ask that. What are the characteristics that people are buying? Is it uh, higher side pointers? Is it is it uh, solitaires? What is really in demand? 
Uh, if you see diamond uh, jewelry consumption has increased in the last one year from 8% to 14% in India, across India. Uh, and if you see the younger uh, consumers, they are aware of the global trends. You know, they are, uh, I mean, always on social media, they can, you know, pick up uh, the, uh, the, what is trending today and uh, they are influenced by the international designs. So today, internationally, these designs are moving towards more colors and more uh, like fancy yellow diamonds or fancy colored diamonds in their jewelry pieces and also fancy shapes like you know pear shapes markings ovals these are the round uh, shapes which you know look very beautiful attractive to uh, a consumer where versus the you know standard round diamonds so there is a shift in last few years uh, like you know rose cards so different uh, look different uh, feel you know new look so this is the change uh, that is the consumers looking at, and there is always uh, there is a little bit of uh, uh, influence from the invest, and especially in the younger consumers, which they want to you know move, make it more trendy and more appealing to the eye. Uh, sure. So you know, while the gold prices in last one year have gone up by twenty percent, the volumes as compared to last year don't seem to be matching. But Ajay, with the diamond prices down anywhere between twenty, twenty-five percent, thirty even for some characters. Would you say that the growth here is something that you could watch out for? Uh, see, yeah, of course, diamond exports have dropped, uh, and we expect 25, 20, 25% drop in this uh, financial year. Of course, the prices have dropped. Demand, global demands uh, have uh, shrunk, especially in USA and China, due to all the economic factors. Uh, but India has supported, and uh, and you know, so uh, when we come to See, uh, I think uh, there is a double-digit growth in India uh, when we see uh, the diamond consumption has gone up. Um, and further, we see that, uh, uh, the, you know, the wedding season, uh, the wedding jewelry purchase is a comprises of 60% of the diamond jewelry mm. uh, in India. So that is still to come in the next few months. Uh, and in U.S., the um, the last quarter is the strongest for diamond jewelry consumption, and especially the period of Thanksgiving to uh, Christmas. This uh, five weeks is the strongest demand. It is almost 30-35% uh, retail sales happen in this period. So that we are very optimistic, and when we talk to our retail partners in the U.S., they are quite uh, bullish on that. They are okay. optimistic because uh, first half was a bad uh, patch for them for this uh, current year. Yeah. So that is one day. And when you see globally, there are new markets, uh, you know, uh, like um, uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, uh, Myanmar, uh, Thailand, and Latin America. These are the new markets which are, you know, look promising to us. Okay. And we are, yeah, so we are focusing on that, mm. these markets. And we hope uh, or expect, you know, in a so, few years, uh, it, it could be uh, another China or India in terms of diamond consumption. So it's good to know that we are near bottom when it comes to everything. And the, this quarter clearly yes. is an icebreaker and the next couple of years look good as well. But let me come to the gold guys yet again. And so, so what is the demand that we are looking at for this quarter? So whether it's about global demand, for Indian demand especially, and what is a better way of buying gold, would you say? Well, uh, first of all, let me uh, deal with the Indian demand. Uh -huh. 2021 record year, we all know that. Hmm. In our three decade uh, series, uh, data series, we haven't seen such a demand, 345 tons. That was soon after the lockdown was, uh, 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 you know, the east, and we all had our shots and people had lots of money. That was the best quarter. The last year... 276 tons uh, was purchased. Again, one of the uh, better quarters. This year, we don't expect it to be as good as uh, the last year. And overall, last year was 774 tons. This is new gold demand. This does not include gold for gold, as we all know. And we believe this year it will be slightly on the lower side. It might be closer to 750 tons. But in value terms, again, it's got to be a lot higher. But in, um, you know, volume terms, it will be lower than last year. That's, that's what it is. Now, in terms of which is the best way to buy, uh, clearly that is, uh, you know, jewelry is, continues to be the biggest uh, way. 80% of all gold bought and sold in India is in the form of jewelry. A little bit comes to marks and points. But right now we have options like sovereign gold bond, digital gold, ETFs. And if you're really looking for liquidity, ETF is a very good, uh, you know, thing. And uh, therefore, now the options have increased. You have even within jewelry, you have online jewelry now. So mm -hmm. there are options definitely increasing. The most important thing is what these online uh, stuff and digital stuff give is a lot more trust. 
you know mm. earlier there were lots of worries about you know, will, will i get the right uh, you know chain delivered will i get the right piece delivered now all those are behind us now people are not talking about it but what we have done to this online market is, is amazing <laughs> it is oh absolutely and so many changes the last one year has been clearly eventful and i'm so i i'm sure you'll be very really happy about it and it's going to be uh, quite wonderful on what we can see going forward as well a final question before we go to break philip is to you where do you see the next bout of demand coming in in the global sense i mean this quarter is important we've all uh, you know established that there's going to be festival demand in india and then christmas demand coming in globally as well but where do you see a major chunk of demand now coming Well, I think one we're keeping an eye on central banks we've already spoken about, but in terms of the retailing investor um, for the coin and bar, one thing that's really important to, or can, that can attract investors is price volatility. And so, having prices even today coming off, adding that volatility can be very part of an attractive draw. So, I think we're keeping an eye on for the U.S. market, for example. Um, will we start to see the beginnings of a recovery in Germany? Which has been hit so hard this year because of the cost of living crisis. Um, so I think it'll be really interesting to see how these markets respond to the price volatility that we're seeing at the moment. Oh well, absolutely. So much uncertainty, and that's exactly how we are getting into festivities and the new season as well. But thank you so much, guys. So there's a lot of gold and diamond buying happening right now in the Indian markets. It's good culturally. It's seen as auspicious and the prices somehow have also worked out for the markets there thank you really appreciate you joining all of us and uh, happy festivities to you as well with that it's time for a quick break but don't go anywhere and we will be joined by two special guests on the other side we will have uh, richard singh joining us and we also would have sachin jain on the other side